Hey Overclockers, I'm 8pack and I'm here to talk to you about the new RTX 4080 GPU by NVIDIA. What we're going to go through is overclocking, performance benchmarking and cooling. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, firstly let's go through the specifications of the 4080 GPU by NVIDIA. Uh, the memory is 16 gigabytes GDDR6. The core has 76 RT cores, 304 Tensor cores, 9,728 CUDA cores. That uh, memory core is clocked at a base clock of 2.21 gigahertz with a boost of 2.51 gigahertz. Now the card I'm testing here, which is the Game One Phantom card, uh, actually boosted consistently to 2.75 gigahertz all the time. So it far exceeded uh, the boost clock as written in the specifications by NVIDIA, which I was fairly impressed with. Obviously here at Overclockers UK, we've got many different models and manufacturer of cards available on our website. So please feel free to check that out and maybe pick the card uh, that fits your build or fits in with your motherboard, whatever you wish. Uh, I can just say that the card that I tested here worked really well and overclocked reasonably well as well. Uh, and obviously I did pick a random card from the warehouse, not a cherry picked one, to make sure the results were appropriate for this so that any end user can get them. That's probably the best way to term it. Also on our website, uh, because of the physical size of this card, we've got sections to tell you which cases the card will fit into. Uh, initially and also which PSUs are compatible. Of course ATX version 3.0 PSUs come with the new uh, connector. If you get plan to use a generic PSU that you had before you'll need three 8-pin uh, PCI Express connectors uh, to an adapter and please do be careful when you're connecting the adapter uh, both to the PCI Express cables and to the card itself, especially to the card. Do not bend the cable sharply, um, try to make any 90 degree angles and so on and so on and do make sure it's plugged right in with the clip uh, clicked in and attached otherwise you could have problems with both your PSU and your card. Uh, so that is, is very very important. What NVIDIA are recommending for the PSU capacity for this card is a minimum of 750 watts. I have to say I've not tested anything as low as that. On my AMD 7950 overclocked and tuned CPU system, I was using a 1200 PSU. Uh, I've uh, both an ATX version 3 uh, 1200 by Thermaltake, which worked great, uh, and an older version Be Quiet PSU, which again worked great, but I only had 1200. So I cannot verify that 750 watts is working great. Rate. Although obviously on 1490 I did try some 1000 watts and they were working uh, fine on 1490. So I, I suspect that 1000 watt for me would uh, be the minimum uh, in all honesty. Now I'm going to uh, discuss why I picked this specific card. Uh, this card's uh, by a manufacturer called Gainward, which used to be a very famous NVIDIA manufacturer uh, back in the day, which I used to do a lot of overclocking with. Uh, and they are part of the palette group, which is the same as like uh, Galax, KFA2 and all these other brands. So I just thought I'd pick a, a completely different brand and a random card from our warehouse to test just to make sure I was giving you something that wasn't cherry picked and that you can expect repeatable results on. So we've gone through the specs of the card. Now let's look at the physical stature of this particular card. Um, well, it's weighing in at, ooh, 500 pounds, uh, well, not really, it's actually about two kilos, but still pretty beefy for a GPU. Uh, the cooler, in fact, is very much the same size in both height, width, and weight uh, as a 4090. So for any of you thinking uh, to get a 4080, because it's smaller than a 4090, and therefore will need less space in your case, you'll be completely wrong. It's actually exactly the same size. Uh, I mean, it's literally three and a half slots, uh, same length, same height. So it's got that extra uh, PCB height here over the uh, PCI connectors at the end there. So it's really the same size. What I like about this cooler, of course, for me, is it's got absolutely a minimal RGB, just a nice black, plain black cooler, nice uh, metal back plate as well. Uh, so for me it's quite a nice looking card and of course I would leave the RGB off but if you wish you can plug in the RGB and you've got a, a, an RGB plate here which you can change colour uh, using suitable software. So how did we test the 4080? Well we tested it in exactly the same system as we used for the 4090. The video we did on 4090 launch in the description below. What system was that? 
Well, it was Asus Jean motherboard with 7950X, with uh, the boost up to around six gigahertz maximum. We had 6,000 megahertz Expo memory uh, and really fast uh, NVMe drive. Just to remove as much bottlenecks as possible from the CPU and sifting them to GPU, especially when we're doing uh, 4K benchmarking. That was all called by an AIO, of course. So on this AMD test system, we compared it to exactly the same cards that we did previously. So we had the 3080 Ti Strix, uh, an MSI 3090. We had uh, the iChill 1490. And then of course here, this GameWord Phantom 4080 card. Uh, and obviously the focus of this testing is, is the 4080, but you'll see it compared on our graphs uh, to the other cards that I've just mentioned. So. Uh, now we've discussed the testing system, let's discuss now how effective was this big chunk of cooling that we've got here. Well, it was actually uh, very effective under all types of load that I threw at it, including professional and gaming benchmarks, and including extended stress tests, one of those being uh, the Port Royal stress test. I rocked that up to 4K uh, and I left it running on loop for a good 12 to 14 hours. Uh, and the maximum temperatures I saw uh, throughout that was 74 degrees on the actual GPU, and around 87 degrees C on the hotspot, which means it's a very effective cooler. Uh, and the fans never really had to spin up. It wasn't uh, audibly noisy at all. Uh, whilst obviously keeping the GPU cool enough to completely avoid any type of thermal throttling and keep the boost clock at a very, very consistent 2.75 gigahertz. So the cooling is very effective, just as you'd expect a 4090 cooler being placed on a 4080 to be. It was, it was really uh, a, a great uh, performing cooler uh, and very silent. Okay, now we've gone through testing methodology. Let's look at the stock performance of this 4080 and how was it? Well, it was pretty good, to be honest. What I wanted to test initially was professional benchmarks such as render blendering, because these totally remove any CPU bottleneck within the system. Most gaming, you need some CPU, uh, especially low resolution gaming, you need a lot of CPU. And I wanted to check what actually can this card do. So rendering our Blender OCUK can test, what I saw was that the 4080 is 30% faster than the RTX 3090 and around 32% faster than the 3080 Ti, which was a great result. What I also observed was the 4080 is 31% slower than the RTX 4090, which actually just supports Nvidia's claim that the 4090 is more suited uh, to the professional user who needs that extra GDDR6 uh, and needs that extra clock speed when there's no CPU bottleneck. Often, of course, it's this mixture in gaming and such where the CPU is taking up a lot of the resource and doesn't supply uh, what the GPU needs all the time. So we would still definitely say that the 4090 is ahead but uh, for the gamer uh, and, the, and at the cost, maybe the 4090 is the card that you want to go for. So let's have a look, having said all this, at the gaming benchmarks uh, on this uh, 4080. And what we saw that in, uh, for example, Final Fantasy at 4K, uh, this was 15% faster than the 3080 Ti. Uh, in Superposition at 4K, it was 22% faster than the 3080 Ti. In Time Spy, again at 4K, we were trying to really push the the uh, resolution here to obviously test uh, the card uh, and, and try to lower the CPU impact if you like. We saw a 28% better uh, result. In Port Royal, now this is heavily ray tracing, heavily uh, DX12, heavy lighting effects. So it's really, really pushing the GPU. We saw it was 50% better uh, than 3080 Ti. And obviously it's got far superior ray tracing ability, just as we saw with the 4090. This new series of cards are really designed for hammering the ray tracing, getting your detail up, and indeed increasing performance on that type of benchmark or test. We saw a 25% increase on 1444 port, port rail. Again, 1440p, it's not pushing this card to its maximum, to be honest, you are actually shifting the emphasis to the CPU. It was 28% better in 1080p Firestrike. Again, see the same re reason for the result as previous. Uh, and finally, it was 10% better in uh, Unigen Valley uh, at 1080p, but Valley at 1080p for a card like this is not stressing it at all. We're getting almost 300 frames per second and the bottleneck's very much switched to not just the CPU, but also uh, the memory that you use in the system when you're, using, uh, when you're getting that kind of FPS. 
Okay, so all those stock results point to an overall gain in 4K of around 29% uh, on the previous generation 3080 Ti. Now this is obviously considerably less than the 1490, which we saw about 100% gain, but it's still a very solid gain. Uh, and those gamers who are looking at 4K uh, will want to balance off really budgetary requirements and what PSU, etc. they've got uh, to whether they want to go for the 4090 or the 4080. The 4080 is still a very good card. And obviously between 29% improvement and 100% improvement, there is a slot there for a 4080 Ti should Nvidia choose to launch one in the future. So those were the stock results and we wouldn't be overclockers without some overclocking results, right? So, as usual, we'll try to gain a little bit of extra free performance by installing Afterburner, maxing out the performance target, which was only 102% on this particular card, uh, and then seeing what the maximum frequency it could run our stress test for, which was a high resolution Port Royal uh, stress test, run for a, a good number of hours actually to make sure this card was then gaming stable for whatever you throw at it. So uh, the results here, uh, are not the maximal overclock of the card. They're what you could reasonably use the card for 24 seven, 365 for your gaming. And what we ended up with was an overclock of uh, 2940 megahertz on the core clock speed with it running consistently at 2940 megahertz through uh, all benchmark testing. And we were able to add uh, 600 megahertz offset on the memories also. Uh, I'm an overclocker, so I didn't try any undervolting or any type of voodoo like that where you use extra uh, lower power. I always want to use extra power. So the power targets were always maxed out and I didn't do any undervolting. I mean, with overclock settings or whatever I did with the card really, I, I didn't find anywhere where there was going to be a thermal throttle issue. So I, I didn't feel a necessity to even uh, check out any of that kind of stuff. So how did this uh, extra performance or free performance of overclocking uh, affect our benchmarking suite? I ran exactly the same benchmarks again, and you'll be able to see those in the graphs. Uh, what it did was reduce our render time by 2.1% in Blender, uh, which is not a lot, but it's an extra 2.1% time you could save uh, of free performance. Uh, we got 5% increase in superposition at 4K. We got a 6.8% increase in Final Fantasy. We've got a 4% increase in 4K time spy, a 5% increase in Port Royal at 1440p, and only a 1.9% increase in Unigen Valley. But as I said, Unigen Valley, that's 1080p, so it's a CPU. We'd probably benefit like 10% if we just overclocked the CPU under the 200 or 100 megahertz. But obviously that was already uh, maxed out boosting at six gig. Uh, so those were, you know, actually not bad results from just uh, a quick overclock and a bit of stress testing because you, you get a minimum of, uh, in your games of probably 5% extra uh, performance for not really doing doing that much uh, and not costing yourself any more uh, temperature or really power draw. So not a, not a bad uh, result. And what I did also notice was by overclocking this card, you got more benefit from uh, the megahertz than you did on the 4090. The 4090, I was able to, able to overclock way over uh, 3000 megahertz, 24 seven stable on several uh, cards that I tried, uh, especially the you know, 3D I chill. Every single one of those I tried could go over 3000 megahertz, but it didn't result in uh, around a 5% improvement in gaming performance. It was actually around 3%. So uh, overclocking the 4080 did have uh, wider benefits. So I, I suppose you could hypothesize that if you had water cooling on this card and can push it maybe another uh, 75 to 100 megahertz, your benefit would then be 10%, which is really a solid uh, a solid benefit from overclocking, uh, which essentially is not uh, costing, costing you extra on the hardware. Although of course, if you had a water block, then it's costing you more on the cooling. So again, it's uh, trading off your budgets. Okay, so in conclusion, who should buy this card? Well, anyone who wants top performance in high resolution gaming. Also, it is applicable to the professional user, but myself, I'd still recommend the 4090 for people who are doing things like Octane rendering or Blender, something like that. The 4090 card does really stretch its legs on those professional benchmarks, and it is definitely worth the extra money there. For gamers, it's obviously a different story. Some gamers might want to save a little bit in terms of both power draw and, of course, in terms of cost. Uh, I mean, the 4090 is definitely outperforming this card 
uh, when gaming, but, but maybe not by as much as the increased cost benefit is to the gamer. It's really uh, up to the individual gamer. Would I recommend the card to buy for a gaming rig? Absolutely. Would I recommend it in 4K, uh, 1440p, 1080p, whatever you want? Absolutely, yeah. And of course, I would also recommend that you uh, pair it with a top line CPU and push the CPU in terms of overclocking and tuning as far as you can to get the best out of the card. Of course, if you want uh, the best CPU upgrade bundle to go with your card, you can check out the 8-pack bundles on the website. Now, will these cards be going in 8-pack systems? Yes, of course they will, uh, but as an option rather than the default, the default will obviously still stay the 4090. And at the same time, obviously as that, to integrate them into the systems, I'm waiting of water blocks. Now the water block will actually make the card smaller in terms of physical size for sure, uh, but obviously we will need to redesign the 8-pack systems accordingly to make sure the ports and everything is in the exact right place to supply the coolant and so on and so on. So manufacturers, get the water box ready and we'll put them in our systems. I think uh, rather than the 8-pack systems, which this will be an option, uh, the 4080 is more suited to our infinite range of systems, which are very similar to the 8-pack systems in terms of aesthetics. Well, they're, they're inspired by 8-pack, which of course everyone is inspired by 8-pack, right? Uh, and we will be integrating the 4080 uh, into those systems again as soon as uh, water blocks appear on the market. So, overclockers, that's about all I've got time for now on the 4080. So, as usual, uh, don't like, don't subscribe, but do comment on the size of my graphics card.